Here's an interesting question, just to stimulate thought. Is living in urban conditions a package of defense mechanisms, or you might say, a package of drugs of choice, as compared to situations you might call rural or deep rural? And by urban or urbania, I'm also referring generally to suburbs also. Hence, in Colorado, perhaps 10, 15 years ago, there was a movement, in fact, for the rural people of Colorado to secede and form a separate state from the urban parts. And it being no surprise to many if they were to look and consider that many Republicans are found in the rural areas as opposed to the urban areas. And noting that many of the people who are Christians, sometimes also derogatorily termed fundamentalists, are often more to be found in the rural areas, including the Midwest of the United States, as opposed to urban areas where if there are Christians, they tend not to call themselves fundamentalists. They might call themselves, in a sense, prosperity Christians, or Christians who have been blessed greatly by God, or Christians who, you might say, have a different flavor, noting that the Mennonites and Amish do not tend to live in urban areas, and they have a much different viewpoint on how they consider themselves justified to be Christians, and what will happen when they show up at the pearly gates as to more than simply claiming in a 15-second prayer on their knees that uh, they are then in, so to speak, and on the list. Not that I'm stating my viewpoints one way or the other on Christianity in general, or the various flavors. There is, too, a fascinating video by a Dr. Vaknin. Actually, he goes by Prof. Vaknin, P R O F. V-A-K-N-I-N, on YouTube channel. He lives somewhere in Russia today, and a very interesting fellow. Not a perfect man, of course, I would say, but many interesting ideas, including on the topic of, quote, narcissism, if you were to use that term that I find somewhat derogatory. But anyway, and uh, urban living, and um, a very interesting take on that and how this is not suitable in his mind. There's also a um, sociologist of a hundred or more years ago from France, Durkheim, who talked a lot about Urbania too, urban life and how this has resulted in suicide rates ten times above that of average previously. And perhaps um, this then not being ideal. But what do some people perhaps find a great package of drugs of choice or escapes of choice, whatever have you, of urban ways? Seems to me the following. First, the sheer number of distractions compared to to rural life. In fact, I have a book I scanned through a year ago by a Christian man living in Texas, who once spent some time in Mexico and then wrote on homelessness and his supposed notion of deplorable conditions in some parts of villages in Mexico. And he was saying, for instance, there's no meat and there's nothing to do down there. And some people, yes, in the smaller villages in Mexico come to America claiming that there's nothing to do in their villages. But I would say perhaps they say that more and more because they see the glitz and glitter of America as portrayed on television in various forms and think that America must be a Shangri-La, like some regard here California to be, and go there, find it to be otherwise, but then trapped. Or Americanized, say, in about ten years' time, as one person put it to me. So if there's nothing to do, that could have mean not enough stimulations, not enough distractors, hence the term boredom. But the philosopher Camus saying that 
uh, many of us fear our thoughts in a room, so to speak, and that this is a major problem for mankind or many parts of it. I would say depending on how much trauma one experienced and whether one was loved significantly by anyone in one's childhood. Secondly, in many ways, urban life does offer a lot of creature comforts as far as what they call security or uh, cradle-to-grave predictability as to a whole lot of services. Some would call them welfare services, social services, what have you, but great predictability then, even to the extent of uh, faster arrival time perhaps for fire ambulance services and police patrols in general and a lot of lighting uh, of certain key areas anyway or at least for some segments of that seg situation and not others such as uh, alluded to by those who say our infrastructure in inner cities is falling completely apart or the, by the term ghettos. Others like the seeming greater medical care facilities offered in urban areas. Research hospitals even they might be called. Others may say too they find it more cosmopolitan. One book Where to Retire saying that if you went to the rural areas you would have to learn to tolerate talking about pig farming for instance and uh, power lines that go down and aren't put back up during uh, a storm aftermath for several weeks perhaps. And one of the major reasons some don't move to Alaska, a video said, is because of slow delivery not just of mail but Amazon packages, let alone the cost of everything up there and the sunlight or no sunlight issues, sometimes up to 24 hours no sunlight or total sunlight. And of course um, matters of frigid cold in certain parts and high housing costs in certain parts and the need for prior planning in many areas if you are especially in the so-called bush and of course little or no medical care then to you also in the bush then there's a matter once again of Professor Vaknin talking about many quote narcissists in urban areas seems to me urban areas with much more money in general are places where one can flaunt it to make oneself make put oneself up and others down hence the term narcissism a somewhat derogatory term I believe but at any rate can you imagine driving your Maserati or other high-ender car in a rural area say a Rolls Royce or a set of Rolls Royces you own in a town of 500 or 2,000 in rural areas or even parts of Alaska or Vermont or Maine. Seems to me some would say it looks ridiculous or what happens when you hit a pothole. Noting by the way I once read that even in Connecticut they have some atrocious road conditions as per potholes and breaks in the road in general. And in Michigan the cold weather, perhaps in Connecticut too, destroying the roads quite rapidly with cold weather plus water cracking things and constant repairs needed then on the roads too clogging up traffic and costing a mint. I might interject at this time my view that many of the greatest sages and leaders in general of the world have come typically from small villages or very rural settings in general often from farms and I'm not referring to huge industrialized farms with uh, tractors that are air conditioned and driven by GPS. I'm referring to the more subsistence farms, the more rural farms, even the farms that you used to plow with a horse uh, or mule. And farms that required a lot of sweat and effort um, certain situations um, in whatever country perhaps even in the Far East today in some smaller island nations maybe Okinawa where some people then regularly live to a hundred or more 
as farmers. Hence the term sometimes a little or a lot of hard work never killed you. Now my perception too is that urban life is far too rapid paced, far too oriented toward getting things and getting somewhere. Even Eric Fromm having reading, writing a book to have or to be. To be, in my mind, as per being someone content, happy, serene, rather than being someone wanting things. Even the movie The Song Catcher, having a man, was it Reed, discussing getting versus having or, or being. There's something to that phrase. And wanting simply to be left alone. Interestingly, two great marketers, salesmen, have talked right in the preamble of their speeches about money is not the root of all evil and that salesmen are not trying to sell you things you don't want, don't need, and can't afford, i.e. a ton of distractors, as found so typically once again in urban life. Hence, why else do you think they call New York City the city of manicness, basically, or that it is an empire of neon signs and huge buildings. Huge buildings, by the way, conveying a sense of power as to their hugeness, the people who created them, and a vicarious sense that you too are powerful, like a little god or goddess. <laughs> And that's urban sense, urban living giving a sense of massive amounts of control as per predictability, uh, even, quote, being taken care of without having to lift a finger or think as per lifting a finger. And uh, once again, being able to show your stuff off to your ego advantage in the put down of others. And one last comment, how urban life offers so much more anonymity than rural areas. Your character will be known in a rural area, even to the extent if you go on a large farm and disappear in the rural area, only to resurface every two weeks for groceries and uh, gasoline. Hence the adage that he took to the woods with his RV or with his wife or um, companion five dogs and chickens said somewhat derisively now there are some who like in biblical scriptures are just to be of the world and not or rather in the world but not of the world uh, that meaning probably somewhat clear if one were to ponder it but that can be easier said than done and perhaps we need to have a balanced approach. And hence an afterthought too. Some areas like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle have so many quote homeless people and it's always said well they have such addiction issues but um, maybe they are there not just because of the warm weather arguably less so perhaps in the winter in Seattle but particularly because these are areas where there's a lot of distractors and isn't chemical drug addiction a form of distraction from your traumas. Um, hence many homeless, so to speak, wanting not just whether they can um, tolerate even in the winter outdoors or with just a sleeping bag, but they're wanting San Francisco because of all the um, distractive quote amenities that are not to be found in the sticks for instance in some of the poorest areas of the country it is said economically like Kentucky or maybe Mississippi or Alabama noting by the way that I as a Kentucky citizen have ran across somewhere that Kentucky can be a great way of life for certain writers and I have a book on certain writers that I wish to plow through who live in Kentucky. Uh, the idea being that perhaps the land is much cheaper, thus you have to expend much less resources to get it. 
I know people from New York, for instance, who came to Kentucky, bought a 40-acre spread here to get away from things or grow uh, or do whatever because it was so much afford more affordable. I know a person, too, from Oregon, Portland, who did the same thing coming here and having a spread of land. Same deal. And I may have alluded to anonymity. Anonymity, surely, in the urban areas as opposed to rural areas. In fact, there's a dating coach who has ironically left the country uh, who talked, Caleb Jones, talked of how if you want to have a lot of partners, female partners, so to speak, if you know what I mean, he said you're going to have to go to a city of at least a million uh, in population, but he didn't explain why. My take being that in rural areas, your playing the field would be quite noticed and disapproved of. In fact, I know a gay man who owns a jewelry shop in a small village in Appalachia who said, uh, everybody knows your stuff and spends all his summers for the past 20 years in Japan with friends. And um, yes, where he lives, in a straw bale home with a hose delivering water from a neighbor with many scorpions he has to step on when he gets up in the morning as one of the costs to pay. Again, for a lack of anonymity, um, plus or minus, and I'm not even saying anything value-wise about various sexual um, uh, outlooks. I'm simply stating the way it is, I believe, in rural areas, that there is no anonymity but there is in urban life. And in fact, many clubs. There's even in libraries in a major metro area in Kentucky, uh, one or more groups devoted to um, gay pride or lesbian pride, whatever the terminology is. And at one time, 30 years ago, someone, a uh, medical doctor, told me that there's a strong movement in this one major metro area in Kentucky for for the gays or lesbians, what have you, terminology-wise these days. Uh, hence the difference between urban and rural life, even in what you might call a more fundamentalist area or more religious area, what have you, of America today. You would never find a gay pride group or lesbian group in a rural area. I can guarantee it. But you'll find that much more under the sun, say, in New York City. So some might say they don't want to go to the rural areas because there's too many fundamentalists, uh, too little anonymity in general, uh, too little ways to make money, although that's changing with Internet, um, too, too few distractors, hence boredom. Um, seems to me thus two different ways of life and uh, there being quite a struggle then and this playing out politically too but one last thought it would be I believe a great error to say that everybody in the rural areas is a fundamentalist in terms of a what some would say a very rigid point of view on uh, Christianity or very intolerant unaccepting view of others who have a different viewpoint. Um, there being differences then in, quote, even professing fundamentalist Christians who attend, quote, fundamentalist churches in rural areas as to what they really think, many simply saying they're touting the hardline, very conservative, very stringent views just to fit in, to conform for uh, less blowback. Whether that a great idea or not, one could question. But it being true, if we're one to look on the internet, that Christianity, whatever you're going to call it, as to its flavor, in some countries is much under malign, much um, castigated. That then, my whirlwind ideas then on rural versus um, urban.